Well, hi there, and welcome to the Amazon rainforest. These are leaf cutter ants, and I, before this trip, had never ever seen leaf cutter ants before. And we've just found this colony. I've seen a couple, at least two, maybe three different size classes coming through here. And uh, we want to figure out where they come from, where they go, and just what they're doing. So let's check them out. So one thing that I'm noticing here is I've got, I've got three basic size classes. I've got kind of a medium size ant that's carrying the leaves. Every now and then I get a really big one with a ginormous head that walks by. And then there are a lot of little ones also out here on the trail. They don't seem to be carrying leaves, though every now and then I see one hitching a ride on one of the leaves. So it looks like the leaves are going downhill from here and the ants are going uphill that don't have leaves. Wow, there's a battle of Hercules beetles going on over there. Just a little distraction to watch a beetle battle go on. The female present and two males are fighting over her. And it looks like three males are fighting over her. That male's making his way back up there. They are. No, no. They're weevils. And the male has like this fuzzy proboscis and now he's getting the opportunity to mate for he has thwarted that other male. Oh, but that other male is not happy about it and he's making his way back over. He's considerably smaller. And there are a bunch of littler weevils gathered around. But it looks like to the victor go the spoils. And even though he's quite a bit littler than that female, wow, she must be laying down a pretty powerful pheromone path. Here comes that other challenger back. Oh. Big guy number one is back, they're back at it. Using their mouth parts to try to knock each other off the log. It's an epic battle. Get out of here. The previous victor is about to thwart again, but he didn't succeed. And now the female's having none of it. She goes, I saw that, nope. So the second male also got an opportunity to mate. Persistence paid off, the, the bigger male got distracted by a different Weevil, and so now both of them have had an opportunity to mate. Never give up. Those are the biggest weevils I've ever seen in my life. That female is probably two, two and a half inches long. The males, that little one's probably only a little over an inch long. The bigger one, who's also mating on the other side of the log, so he's found himself another lady. Man, this is where the weevils come to play. Let's get back to our leaf cutter friends. All right, so now that we've seen uh, a little weevil mating, we've gotten back here with our leaf cutter friends. Uh, we've still got these medium sized ones that are carrying the leaves. We've got a huge number of the small ones right here. And I'm not seeing very many of those really huge ones with the great big heads just yet. But it looks like they're going this way. And actually, these ones that are crossing the trail here, I'm not even sure they're leaf cutters. These look to be a different sort of ant. Our leaf cutters are coming up this way. Yeah, that's our leaf cutters. These are something else entirely. They too are moving in more than one direction. Let's see what happens where they cross paths with one another. If they have any difficulties. It looks like the leaf cutters don't bother them and they don't bother the leaf cutters. But it's interesting how all these small ants, which I'm not sure which colony they belong to. Let's see. I've got some of the leaf cutters kind of standing here as defenders. There's a lot of, a lot of action going on here at the intersection and it's really interesting to me that all the little ants are hanging out here where the two different streams of ants are intersecting, but there doesn't seem to be any sort of a conflict going on at all. I don't see any ants engaged in combat with one another. So these two species uh, seem to coexist rather well. Let's keep following our leaf cutters. Okay, so they're bringing the leaves down. So the colony's hopefully down the hill. But let's see where they're getting their leaves. All right, we've followed them past where they left the trail and now they're on this big uh, fallen ficus tree. And they're just walking down the edge. Again, still, those with leaves are going that way. Those without are going up. So let's keep following them. See where they go. Try not to step on any. Okay. 
they come down the log for a little bit and then across and then they go up just this one single branch and then they switch onto this branch and they keep going up. Oh wow, and they follow that all the way up there. Hopefully we don't lose them. All right, they continue to follow that branch all the way down. They just keep going down farther and farther until they go into vegetation so very dense that there's no way we're gonna be able to get through it. So I think this might be as far as we can follow them for now. This way, let's go see if we can find out where they're going. That means we're gonna to have to follow the ones that have a leaf, not the ones that don't. Okay, so we've followed the leaf cutters as far as we could to where they're getting their leaves. Now I'm just gonna follow their little trail here all the way back down, and hopefully we can figure out where they're going. So here's their trail. Where was it that they crossed those other ants? I think those other ants might already be done. I don't see any sign of that other ant, those other ants. So that other colony that was moving through, it's gone. I actually still see a pretty big cluster of the smaller ants, but I've seen those. I'm not sure if those are army ants or what they are, but they'll come through and they're all going in one direction. That's the difference between them and the leaf cutters. They're all going in a single direction. Leaf cutters have some ants that are coming back with leaves and a lot of ants that are going up without leaves. Those other ants move in a single direction, but they seem to leave the leaf cutters alone. And uh, the leaf cutters left them alone. Now they're gone. Leaf cutters carry on. So let's see. Keep following their trail. As far as it goes. At least as far as I can follow it. Okay, all right, we're making it most of the way down. Here they come onto the stairs. Now down this stair, down this stair. And this looks like it is a leaf cutter ant colony. So we did manage to find where they're going home. And right here at the door to the colony, I see some of the big ones with the big heads. I see a lot of the medium sized ones carrying leaves. And I see a ton right here at the entrance of those tiny little ones. And it is my understanding. So there's three classes of ants that we're seeing out here. There are really big ones that are defenders, right? They're defending the column and defending the colony. There are the medium sized ones, which are the ones that actually clip the leaves and transport them to and from. And then there are the little bitty ones that receive the leaves and bring them into the colony. Now, something about leafcutter ants is these leaves are responsible for their only food source. This is the only thing that they eat, but they don't eat leaves. The thing is, leafcutter ants are farmers of a very specific type of fungus, and they cultivate that fungus in special chambers deep inside of their colony, and it's these little tiny ants that tend to that fungus. Now, their whole life depends on that fungus. When a new queen leaves the colony, she'll pack her mouth up with that fungus and bring the cultures to start a brand new colony elsewhere. She needs to have a little bit of it. If anything happens to those, that fungus inside of the colony, the colony is doomed. And there is a type of fungus that is a competitor with the type of fungus that they use. None of that can get in. Also bacterial contaminants, none of that can get in. And so these tiny ants bring it in and there are more of these tiny ants, some of which live inside of these farm chambers where they farm the fungus and they never ever, ever leave those chambers so that they never become contaminated and won't contaminate the, the ever so important lifeblood of the colony the fungal growth that is occurring on these leaves after they prepare them deep inside the colony. Really, really cool. Also inside of here somewhere will be the queen of the colony because leafcutter ants, like most ants, are eusocial organisms, meaning that they have essentially one individual that reproduces and all of the others do not. And this is really unusual to see this sort of a, a society. Of course, ants are doing great, so it's working really well for them. 
But this is largely possible due to the fact that all of these ants are female. Only very rarely is a male born, and the males only have half of a genome. They've only got one set of chromosomes. They're called haploid. And because the males are haploid and only produce one kind of sperm, it makes it so that the females, on average, 75% related to one another because they all share the 50% of the genome that they get from dad, and then they share, on average, half of the other half of the genome that they get from mom. So that's the other 25%. And so on average, they're 75% related to their sisters, including future queens. That's more related to their sisters than they would be to their own daughters if they had them. They'd only be 50% related. So these ants pass on their genes more effectively by helping their mother produce more sisters for them than if they had their own daughters. And so eusociality like this can thrive in an ant colony like these leafcutter ants. They're so industrious. And I've seen at times, in fact, I'm seeing it right now, smaller ants riding on top of the leaves. And they're not just being lazy. There's a special kind of fly that parasitizes these ants. It's actually probably a parasitoid because it will lay an egg in the head of these, these ants. It lands on the leaf, crawl down and lay an egg right next to the mandible of the ant and then it's developing maggot will eat the head of the ant. The little ants are very good at fighting off these flies and so oftentimes they will take a ride on the leaves on the way back in order to fight off these flies. There's one right there. So very cool. What an amazing society and it was really cool to see them interact with that other species of ants and see how you know, they can coexist completely peacefully even when their, their trails cross. It, it's been really special getting to spend some time with these ants today. I, I really appreciate you being here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this opportunity to get a little bit closer to nature. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. This is mate guarding behavior. So now that they have mated, they're defending the females and making sure no other males come to mate because there's still sperm competition after. So even though he's mated, doesn't mean his sperm are the ones that will fertilize the eggs if others come on and mate after. <laughs>